let me tell you what we're doing today. I've got this personal project of mine. It's an F-150 truck with a built big block in it, 500 and something horses. It's got a nice transmission built behind it. It's got posi track, traction bars, big old fat Mickey Thompson tires. But today we're gonna do something with the inside. We're gonna take a digital dashboard from Intellitronics and we're gonna install that. I'm gonna walk us through that installation. We're gonna see how good it looks and how nicely it performs. And at the end, we're gonna take this truck down and find out something I don't know. We're gonna use the built-in quarter mile timer and see what this thing actually does in the quarter mile. So let's get started. This is actually the truck that we're going to uh, put this dashboard in. I love this thing. It's just my daily errand runner. But this is the dash that I can't stand. First of all, I fried the voltage thing on the back and it doesn't work. And I don't like gauges hanging off of things. So this is the one I'm putting in it. And it actually is pretty nice. If you go to Intellitronics website, they come in four different colors. It tells you all the features, which are, it's got nice sending units that come with it. It's really easy to install. The price is right. And it looks great, especially when you start looking at the, the hassle of trying to find factory gauges sometimes in these older trucks, forget it. This is a much better idea. So, uh, and I've gotten to know Intellitronics a little bit. There's a guy down there named Jim I've worked with, you know, uh, off and on because of some other products of theirs that I use. And, and I find everybody down there real easy to get along with. So I'm glad he really started getting me into these other things. Thanks, Jim. So back to the, uh, back to this. So I have to take this ugly dash off. You know, the first thing you're going to have to do is deal with this button, uh, your dash, your light, and your uh, wipers. Wiper pulls right off. The light button has a little spring behind it. You have to bend the little tang back. There's a little slot. You bend that little spring and it slides off. You need a little tool like this. It's pretty easy. I just thought I'd throw that in because some people are kind of perplexed by that whole thing. It's a trip. They've been on there a while. They're kind of hard. So once you get the original, the outside bezel off, you can see your full instrument cluster. It's only held in by a few screws. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's, it's, it's a rather straightforward disassembly. I thought I was gonna have to drop the column, but I didn't, that was nice. Once I pulled the screws, take a note of that major plug on the right side of the column up there. That's the only plug that goes into that dash that um, runs your gauges. You're gonna go back to that for a send, one sending unit wire that I used. Here's the digital dash that we're gonna put in it. And it comes with the dashboard itself, a piece of plexi that's not in this photograph, I forgot to add it in there. Um, there's a small harness that goes to your speedometer sending unit, you've got your temperature and your oil pressure sending unit there. So a good place to start is to start putting in your sending units. So take your oil pressure sending unit, find the one on your engine, mine was behind the intake manifold on the back of the block and it leaked anyway so it was kind of nice. I just unscrewed it and you screw in the new one and run a brand new wire from there up to where your dashboard is gonna be. Find a rubber grommet on the firewall or whatever. Then you go to your other two sending units. You've got your oil pressure sending unit done. Now to put in your temperature sending unit, all you have to do is find the sending unit on your engine. Mine was on the front of the intake. Unscrew that, put the new one in, run a wire back to where you're gonna install your instrument cluster, back to the dash. It's pretty simple. You may have to get an adapter if your threads are a little bit different. Mine had a bigger port in the manifold than the, than the actual sending unit had, but they're like two bucks at the parts store. Very simple. Now that the uh, temperature sending unit's done, we're gonna crawl under the truck and pull the speedometer cable. It just unscrews and pulls straight out. There's a little clip that holds the gear on the, on the, the speedometer cable, you need to take that off and put it on the sending unit. This little wire plug goes on the back of that sending unit to run the wires to the dash. But you look at the gears here. The red one I had was fried, so I ended up putting a new one on it, but you just slip it right over the end of the sending unit and put the clip back on it. And then you install it in the transmission. Now you may have to tweak the bracket a little bit where it fits your transmission. I had to pull mine off and you know t twist it a little bit to get it to fit exactly right and nice but it's real simple put that in you're done now you can start working on your dashboard so after you've pulled the nuts off the back of the gauges and they fall out the front of your instrument panel you have a naked panel here with the outside bezel all these gauges just came out of your your housing for the instrument cluster there's a ribbon circuit on the back you don't want to remove that. 
you have to leave it on there because that plug that's still hanging out of your dashboard runs your turn signals and your um, high beam light and there's one wire that I used out of it instead of running a new wire to my fuel sender in my gas tank back up to the dash I isolated the wire that was on the original harness and I spliced into that to save me the trouble of having to run a wire back to the tank. If you look on the back of the instrument cluster and look at the the little ribbon circuit board there, the one I have marked F for me was the the signal wire from the gas tank and it corresponds with one of the wires on this plug. Double check it five times because it'll mess with your mind, but when you identify the right wire, cut it and I personally used that wire to run my fuel sender or my fuel gauge on the dashboard. You can run a new wire if you want, but that's what I did to save trouble. So now you take your instrument panel and you take that piece of tinted plexi that came with it and you sandwich them together using the little cylinder spacers and the nuts and screws that came with the kit. It's really simple. You peel the protective stuff off the plexi, keep it, get it really clean, and then put it together. And this is what it looks like from the back. And this is what you're going to put inside of your instrument cluster and mount inside the dash. And your, your original factory plastic cover piece, the, the clear, goes over this. So there's one more thing to keep in mind. On the back of it, there's a switch here. It's like a, it looks like a little tiny, uh, like a little breaker. Um, it can be in several positions. If you have a mid 70s or mid 80s truck like I do, the sending unit in the gas tank is a 10 to 73 ohm range between empty and full. Both of these buttons have to be flipped to the on position to correspond with that ohm range for the sending unit in your gas tank. There are other configurations. Maybe there's different sending units that come with different years, but I think all the Fords in this whole truck range that this dash fits all used the on on position make sure it's that way when you install it or your fuel gauge won't read properly from here on in it's just a wiring and reverse in, reverse uh, process follow the instructions and attach all your wires with good butt connectors put your dashboard back together mount it back in the truck it's really simple there's one more thing you have to do you need to drill two holes to mount the two buttons that you use to run the dashboard. These two little buttons you see I put right here by the steering column. One is your odometer button and the other is your programming button. Programming, for example, you hold the button and it will cycle through um, calibration mode or zero to 60 or a quarter mile. If you want to calibrate the speedometer, you stop and you cycle it through till you see calibration and you touch the button and that's when you start driving. You drive exactly one mile, push the button again, now your speedometer is calibrated. But these two buttons need to be mounted somewhere, so find some place to put those. Honestly, the installation didn't take me that long. I think anybody good with their hands and familiar with their vehicle could probably have this done in any afternoon. Um, give yourself a day, but it's not overly complicated and it looks really nice it's such an upgrade all the that all the gauges i had on my steering column and underneath my dash i took i mean they're all gone i took over the aftermarket gauges took them out and now i just have a nice clean looking installation i'm very happy with this so i would recommend to anybody who wants to upgrade their dash this is a really nice affordable dashboard and it performs quite well i don't think i'm going to get to do the zero to 60 thing or the quarter mile timer because i just broke a motor mount on the truck but I'll circle back around and maybe add it to this video later so you can see what it was. I'm hoping I can do 12 flat, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm very happy with Intellitronics. I really like the product. The installation was not that bad, so I would recommend it. It's a two thumbs up as far as I'm concerned.